Welcome everyone to The Collective. This is an exciting time of the year as we look forward to coming into a time of fasting that we do at the first of every year for 21 days. And this has been something that uh, a lot of us have been working up to over the years and some of us are just getting into it. And so it can be a daunting thing, but God is always calling us to big things and hard things. And if we're faithful in those, he always shows up. And we've seen this time and time again. Fasting is such an important discipline to to develop. It doesn't come easy and it doesn't come naturally. In fact, nothing could be more unnatural than depriving our bodies of of life-sustaining food. And yet God calls us to this for a number of reasons. One of the most important reasons is just this conscious decision to focus on him and to die to our flesh. And that is a fancy biblical way of just saying, hey, we're going to not do something that we want and that we need. We're going to set ourselves apart for what God is about to do. And somehow in the mystery of what God is, supernaturally, he speaks to us more clearly and we hear more clearly when when we are hurting, when we are suffering and longing for the things that our body needs. And it's an amazing time. It's a time of uh, where we can draw up close to each other as, as a community, as we focus on putting him first. It's a time where our families can draw close to each other as we create a new pattern and a new habit in our households of what it means to be focusing on God and putting him first. And then absolutely is a time of victory for our own flesh when we are able to set our minds to something that God is calling us to and persevere and have victory in that thing, it sets us up for so much more that God has for us. Nothing can be simpler than not eating. And yet at the same time, nothing is harder than not eating. And in that simple act of obedience, God shows up every time. And so as we enter into these, this next series of videos, as we learn about the importance of fasting, I just ask that you allow God to do a work in you and that you're obedient in this thing. He tells us that there's a time that we're, we should be fasting. And as Christians, we are called to that, and it's a good thing. So come along, Welcome along for the journey, and uh, you're going to see, see God show up in a big way. So let's pray into uh, our time of worship. Lord, thank you for calling us to hard and big things, knowing that you always join us. You're always there to comfort us and, and pull us along. Lord, we invite you into this, this part of our lives that, uh, that we're putting you first and that we want you to be there um, at the end of it, Lord, we're, we're looking for you around every corner. Um, as we crest every hill, we want to see you on the other side. So, Lord, this is no different. We invite you into that. Thank you for inviting us into your family as adopted sons and daughters. Thank you for making us co-heirs with Christ. Lord, help us to not take that lightly. Help, help us to honor that gift by following you in, in perfect obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. I just felt like um, it was just 
used to block, like I, I couldn't connect and I just thought maybe God's presence isn't here. And I've just slowly learned that as I re-surrender over and over again in those moments, as I say, no, God, you are here, as I speak the truth that he is here, and I re-surrender myself to him, that he just begins to pour and pour more. His presence is powerful. And if we don't feel it, it's probably because we need to re-surrender again in this moment. Re-surrender our thoughts, re-surrender our lies.
God and crush us. Fill us with your love. Thank you so much. Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. So Lord, I, we thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you so much for the fact that you've called us out of darkness into light. And uh, Lord, we just uh, we just praise you. You're so, you're so worthy. You're so merciful. God, you're so amazing. I just pray you'd lead us today. Lead us as we're d- diving into your word and uh, into the just the message that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to jump into this uh, subject of fasting. So, as the collective, is the collective body God's called us together in, we have five main pillars. We have, uh, we worship together, we pray together, we fast together, we give together, and we build together. And uh, I really want to dig into fasting now because it's really applicable in the fact that we're jumping into our three-week fast. So I just want to say this. Fasting is like tithing. It's, it's this idea that it, when you try to add it up, it doesn't make sense. Like tithing, how if I, if I give, is God going to bless me with more? How, if I, how does, does subtracting something somehow add something to me. And, and, and fasting is the same way. It's this idea of we're taking away food, we're taking away something that gives life to us, and, and somehow it's going to add to us. And it just doesn't make sense in the physical. And, and that idea that you know, God, the, the Lord says that um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so this is one of those things that we need to have faith in order to figure out how this works. And part of it is just saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to take this step. So um, I want to go to Matthew 6, chapter 6. I want to look at verse 3, verse 5, and verse 16. And Jesus says, uh, he's talking about three things. He's talking about when you uh, give, when you pray, and when you fast. And these are things that he says. He doesn't say, if you decide to give, if you decide to pray, if you decide to fast. He says, when. So this is this just shows that this is a part of our normal walk with the Lord. We, we do, we pray, we give, we fast, you know. And so, so fasting is, I think, it's one of those things in, in the church that has been um, just on the, at the very best, it's been on the back burner. At the, at the very worst, it's been something that has been shoved aside as it's a legalistic thing. It's, it's something that uh, it's not necessary. And, and the truth is, you know, the church has been in this big struggle of um, works and faith and works and faith. And, and, uh, and the fact that there's been legalism of people saying, you have to do this in order to be right with God. You have to do this in order to gain favor from God. And that's not fasting. Fasting is not that. We're not into legalism. And so I want to start with some of what fasting isn't. So Isaiah 58, verse 3 to 10. This is talking, and this is Israel, and it's, Israel is asking the Lord this question. They're saying, why have we fasted and you've seen it not? This is in the ESV. Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, the Lord says, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. Is, is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless and poor into your house? when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily, and righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he'll say, Here I am. 
If you take away the yoke from your midst, the yoke from your midst, and the pointing of the finger and speaking with wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. So something that the Lord is saying is He's saying that you know these these people were just going about their everyday life. They're just trying to um, check this box of religiosity while still living a life that is not pleasing to the Lord. And so what God is saying is fasting doesn't just make everything right in your life. You know, fasting is not something that's that's like oh, I did all this stuff, but I fasted and I paid for it, and now I'm good with God. It's not like that. Fasting is a tool that the Lord gives us to take steps to put our flesh down and get closer to Him. So fasting doesn't make us holy and doesn't negate the need for us to walk in the light and do the right thing, right? Um, legalism. So there's a ditch on both the, both sides of the path of life, right? Um, one side is legalism, believing these hard lines, these hard line rules, and saying that, these rules will bring righteousness and justification. But the other side is believing that I can, I can kind of bypass, I can bypass or get away with things as long as I check the box. Like, oh, I'm fasting dinner. And well, I, I, didn't, I didn't eat dinner, I just had snacks. So technically I didn't eat dinner, I'm fasting, you know. These are legalism, both of these things. One is thinking it's going to bring righteousness and justification. One is thinking all I got to do is kind of just check this box. And both of these are legalism. Both of these are, are, are sticking to our selfishness and not, not actually bringing our heart to the Lord. So um, there's a parable of the wedding feast. And uh, in the wedding feast, uh, it's a guy who, who is he's having, throwing a, a wedding for one of his kids. And uh, he sends out all these invitations. All these people have, uh, that he's invited have all these other things to do. They've all got excuses of things that they, they, they couldn't come so then he sends out the invitation to like the whole, everyone in the streets, like everyone he can find. And people accept the invitation. He has this big party and party's going on. And as he's walking through the banquet hall, he sees a guy that's not dressed for the wedding, you know? And I, I could never understand what the heck this was talking about because he goes up to the guy and he says, where's your, where's your garment? Where's your outfit? And the guy's like, didn't have an answer for him. And so the, uh, the father is putting on the wedding feast, grabs this guy and throws him out. And says he casts, he casts him into, into outer darkness, right? And, and I couldn't understand. I was like, you invited this guy. Why would you throw him out? And the whole idea that the Lord is saying is that after he says it, he says, many are called, but few are chosen. And the fact is that we are called. We are called. And there's this fallacy in the church that says, Oh yeah, we're all called. God accepts us as we are. We can just come and just be like we are forever. And that's 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 false because this is what this guy did. He came exactly as he was, and he didn't take these steps to to honor the the master of the feast by by changing his clothes, by cleaning himself up, and saying, "Okay, here we go. I'm I'm here to honor you and to be a part of this wedding." And and what happened was he just came as he was. He didn't take any of these steps, and he got tossed. And so. These things, God gives us these tools. He gives us tools to humble ourselves, to, to, to bring our hearts into a right place before the Lord. You know, the, the word says that those who humble themselves will be exalted, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled. I think one of the big points of this is legalism and dead religion isn't um, stained glass windows and pulpits and pews and suits and ties. Legalism and dead religion is trying to do church without God trying to do things that will make us right with him or make him approve of us more or love us more or accept us more. And that's, that's absolutely not what fasting is. So I just want to like clarify what fasting is not before we jump into what it is. So first of all, fasting is for everybody. And this is for little kids. This is for teenagers. This is for old, young, whatever. It's for everybody. And when we're, when our girls were younger, we, uh, we had them fast candy. I mean, they're like two, three, four years old. And it was like, this is what we're doing as a family. We're going to fast. And uh, so they just fasted. No, no, nothing sugary, no, no candy, no cookies, no nothing like that. And uh, 
it was so incredible the this little the little changes that get made in, in a child when they're able to say no. Because I think the word no is is almost a forgotten thing in our society. I mean, when we can't tell a kid no, it's like, oh, let's not touch that. No, no, you're not touching it. Tell them no, don't touch that type of thing. So uh, because if if a kid if someone can't tell themselves no, if they can't be told no, they can't tell themselves no. And so if we can't tell ourselves no, then then we're in a world of hurt. And the whole one of the, there's so many benefits of fasting, but one of those benefits, one of those uh, triumphs in fasting is being able to just say no, no. And <clears throat> if if it doesn't mean anything to you, it's not going to mean anything to God. So the things that we fast are are something that that is real, you know. And so <clears throat> ultimately, fasting is about food. It's not about fasting Facebook. It's not about fasting movies. Although those things are good to to lump into your fast and say we're going to put aside media, social media, TV, whatever in order to focus on, on the Lord in this time. Um, so there's three types of fasting. There's a full food fast. Actually, there's four types. There's a absolute fast, which is you don't want to go over three days. This is no water and no food. For three, three days is about the maximum because you, you, gotta, you gotta be in a healthy place in your life. And so we're not gonna do that because we're doing a 21 day fast. So the three fasts that we're gonna choose from is you can do a a full food fast, which is liquids only. Only that would be like a clear, clear broth. We're not doing like a blended cheeseburger or a blended, you know, a veg, beef vegetable soup type thing. It's either clear broth. It, it could be juices. It could be like vitamin water. It could be just straight water. And uh, you make up your mind before what you're going to do, and then you you make up your mind and you stick to it. And that's that is the key because it's so easy to bargain with yourself and start. Uh, you know, and start just letting it slack, and then all of a sudden you're eating cheeseburgers again. So, um, first one is a full food fast. Second one is a partial fast, and this is uh, you're going to skip one meal, skip two meals. Say I'm 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 not eating past uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. You know, skipping dinner. So you could have breakfast and lunch. I'm going to skip breakfast, or you could skip two meals. Um, that's the second one, and then the third one is going to be a. Uh, like a mixed fast. And this is something that Daniel in the Bible did. He, uh, he, twice, there's two different, there's two different versions of this. One was he, him and his friends just ate vegetables and, and it was just straight vegetables and water. And they did this, that was a 10 day fast that they did to show the person over them that they could, they could maintain their strength and, and keep living their life normally. And, uh, and then secondly, he did a fast where he said he had no meat, no bread, uh, no alcohol, nothing pleasant. And so the nothing pleasant is very subjective. You could take it super um, strict and say, I'm not going to have ranch dressing on my salad. I'm not going to have salt. And, or you could just take it as nothing pleasant. I'm not going to eat any candy or sweets, no meat, no bread, no uh, alcohol, nothing sweet, something like that. Um, so those are basically the three, the three big ones that, that we get to choose from. Um, and I think it's really key. Don't get hung up on legalism. It's easy to start nitpicking about foods and being like, oh, this broth has a little bit, it's like a, not a vegetable, it's a beef broth, so I'm eating meat. Now, I think it's, not, it's important to not get caught up in these, these little um, details. You know? um, I think it's important to just say, okay, this is what I'm choosing to fast. Here's my parameters. You, you, you come up with them before you start the fast, and then you stick to them. And sometimes, if you're doing a longer fast, like a three-week fast, I think it's good to say, for the first week, I'm going hardcore. I'm doing nothing but whatever it is. And then the second week, I'm going to add in this. Third week, I'm going to add in this. And you give yourself these options, especially when it's your first time fasting. I would say don't do a full food fast if it's your first time. Because uh, when I first started fasting, it was like, uh, I was in Iraq. It was in 2008. And, uh, and I knew Flocky was back home fasting, doing a full food fast. And I said, I'm going to do it, you know. I got about four days into the fast and I'm trying to carry the 60 pound pack and it was a nightmare. And so it, I ended up stopping and, and uh, basically just not doing it. And the next time I tried, I was, I was working out and I was doing it and I made about three days into it and I just could not uh, handle the workload of, of a physical job that I was doing. So I switched, after three days, I switched to a, um, a, like a Daniel type fast. And, uh, 
So I, in that, I learned that if you're doing a really physical job, um, or if it's your first time fasting, don't do a 21-day full food fast. Um, in the years since, I was working, I was working uh, two full-time jobs and then one part-time job, and I did the the full food fast. And it, but my jobs weren't these physical labor jobs; they were sitting around, you know, those kind of jobs. So um, it really, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, there's it's difficult but it's possible. But if it's your first time, stick with one of the other two fasts, skipping meals or uh, just a modified fast of vegetables and so forth. And uh, we're going to pick up in the, next, um, in the next teaching, we're going to talk about the benefits of fasting, physical, spiritual, mental, um, and we're going to talk about just what that looks like, the rewards and difficulties, and we're going to go from there. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much. Thank you that you've called us. You haven't called us to just be couch surfers, Lord. You've called us to, um, to things that are not always easy. You've called us to some difficult things. And, and there's, like Paul said, it says, he said, join in the suffering of the gospel by the power of God. And so everything we're doing, Lord, we don't want to be just trying to whip ourselves and make ourselves suffer, Lord. We want to join in what you're calling us to do which sometimes involves suffering. And we want to embrace it, and we want to do it by your power and your strength. So Lord, I pray that you would lead us, Lord. Lead us as we're stepping into this fast, Lord. I pray that you would, uh, that you would give us um, dreams, that you'd give us vis- visions. And, and Lord, as, 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 as we're taking this time, Lord, I pray that you would draw us. Help us to take those times and pray, take those times and worship, and, and not just try to hide from the pain, but embrace it, and, uh, and let our flesh really go down and our spirit rise up. So I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.